Okay, uh, we're gonna go over skinning fins today. Um, I don't have an actual fin nut, but I have some scrap, uh, one-eighth plywood from one of the last fins I made. Some paper, but then let's talk really quickly about what glue or adhesive uh, would probably be best for skinning the fins. So all the ones that you might use, um, you have liquid cement. That's great on some of these model rocket kits where you're gluing plastic to plastic. Um, <clears throat> might be, you know, a tail, tailpiece ornament. Uh, some of the kits do come with plastic fins that maybe go on a plastic body um, or a nose cone to, a, to an adapter. Um, but that liquid cement usually works really great for that. Um, you have super glue, CA glue, cyan acrylic. Um, you have super thin, medium, and a thick. Uh, it comes in different viscosities. Super thin is great for maybe coating uh, an entire piece of wood, um, something where there's just a really tight fit already and the, the thicker glues would just push out and go everywhere. Um, a lot of people use this to seal the edges of fins as well. Um, since it's super thin, it just sucks into the grain as opposed to sitting on top like the thicker ones. Um, if you ever use this super thin, you really should wear safety glasses because um, it can splash pretty easily. Uh, and that is not something you would want to get in your eye. We have white school glue, uh, stuff everyone's used since kindergarten. Um, really don't need an explanation on that. Uh, it just takes a bit longer to dry, um, but pretty thin, easily spreadable, long set time. You have a lot of time to play around with it. Uh, this is wood glue. It would be the equivalent to Type Bond 1. Um, it's not really waterproof. It's usually for interior use, uh, but a long set time. Uh, you get a lo uh, long ability to readjust pieces. Um, may be good for some things, not necessarily for things like setting the fin to the rocket body, because um, you don't want to give it time to you know start tipping over or play, anything like that. Uh, but a really good all-around wood glue, good for motor mounts and things that aren't really going to move a lot. Type Bond 2 is water resistant, which is great um, for wood glue. A little more, it doesn't say exterior use, uh, it does say weatherproof, which is great. Um, however, this has a strong initial tack and a fast set. So you need to be careful where you use this. Like I said, maybe fins to the body tube would be great uh, for this glue, but not necessarily something like uh, I was gluing an engine baffle or a exhaust baffle into one of the rocket tubes, which has to get pushed in quite a ways. And this set so fast, it just stuck the baffle um, right where the engine mount was gonna go. So it took me quite a while to heat that up and get it moved. Um, I almost broke the tube. Uh, so just be very cautious of where you choose to use that fast set um, thick stuff. And then Type Bond 3 is waterproof, not water resistant. Um, this has a much longer open time, just like the original wood glue, so you get a lot of set time. Um, definitely something to consider. <clears throat> I found this recently on a couple forms. This is great. So most of all of these glues here uh, have quite a bit of shrinkage, um, which is fine. It can pull parts tighter. Uh, it just depends the application. People were using this as a um, basic fillet glue. Uh, maybe when you don't want to use epoxy putty or uh, something a little more expensive. It stays where it is. It doesn't really run. It dries clear, though, which makes it a little hard to see the fillet, but not uh, not not impossible. But precise control, no run. Uh, dries a little faster, sets a little thicker. Um, paintable, sandable. I've used this actually on a couple. Uh, pretty happy with the results, especially in smaller model rockets. Um, Something to definitely consider, uh, maybe even using it around your launch lugs or something. Uh, again, if you don't want to take the time to use an epoxy putty and the two part, I mean, you don't get a whole lot of it, but um, definitely look at that quick and thick. And then the last is this XTC 3D, like I mentioned before, you can use that on 3D printed parts to kind of fill in the layers and the styrations um, before you paint it, before you sand it. Um, you can kind of see on the box, right, it's going from those different layers to smooth and shiny. But um, just be careful what you use that on as well. So let's get to the fin skinning. We're actually just going to use the regular white wood glue. Since both surfaces are really porous, um, it's not actually going to be glue that's exposed uh, on the outside. So you might as well use something that's pretty easy to clean up, that has a, you know, longer set time, gives you a little bit of... Uh, Time to get everything where you want it. You just put it on. You put on 
as much or as little as you want, but the key is we're gonna spread it all out. Uh, I'm gonna use a craft stick here. And just kind of make sure we get it all on the surface there. Uh, it doesn't have to be quite even yet because once you put the paper on and you roll that out and press it out, you'll spread the glue where it needs to go. Uh, you can use your finger, works just as well. Um, not a big deal. And then always have some paper towels handy because you don't want to start spreading glue everywhere. And you can either put it down on the paper and start with it that way. You can lay it on its back. We're going to do that and then flip it. Hold that wood down and just kind of press it out there. Gonna do is just let that set before we come back and trim it. So when that sets we'll come back, we'll trim it, we'll put one on the other side, we're gonna let that set, we'll trim it, and then you can do a little bit of final touch up and if we need to we can seal uh, the edges with the CA glue. Okay so that has set up uh, for a little bit, at least dry enough that it's not gonna just slide around. Um, so you can come back and get your Hobby knife, X-Acto knife, and just kind of come in, do a nice clean cut along the edge. And remove it. Um, if you had, now these are, this is pretty still square edge here. Um, but if you had an airfoil shape or something maybe, you might want to leave just a hair left of paper so that you can roll it over here when we're done. But I'm going to go ahead and finish trimming this up. You can see, I mean, pretty thin, thin sandwich layer there. It just kind of blends right in. Uh, so we're going to go ahead. We'll put some glue on the other side. Again, I'm just using the white glue here. Never seen a spreader. And now, depending on what you're working with, you know, this plywood is not. Um, as porous as, say, some of the balsa wood or um, cardboard or a few other materials. So based on what you're using, it depends on how much glue you would use and how much would get sucked into the grain. Uh, like I said, this plywood's got fairly stable grain. It's already pretty smooth, uh, so it doesn't take a whole lot of glue. You might need a bit more, like I said, if you're doing cardboard or some of the balsa wood, basswood. So we got that. We're going to come back, we can put our paper on it again. Just kind of tack it on from the top. We'll flip it over. Give it a good press down. You can see how it wants to slide. That's okay. That actually helps it set. It smooths out your glue. We'll let this set and we'll come back and trim this one. All right. Now that that has set for a little bit, we can come back and trim off the bottom. I missed it there. There we go. And there you go. We have paper skins on both sides. Not really changing the thickness of it very much. And uh, that'll just let it sand or lightly sand. You don't. You really shouldn't have to sand it much. But again, maybe just pushing some of the edges down. So if you did have some airfoils and you left a little bit of paper, you can just take a screwdriver, the handle blade, um, anything kind of round, and just press it on there. And it'll kind of roll those edges over for you. 
uh, we didn't have much of an edge here, but um, something that's pretty easy to do. Make sure you don't have any edges sticking up and just kind of smooths that edge out there. Pretty easy. Now, you might want to let all that glue dry for overnight, 24 hours, um, before you go and try to actually glue it to the rocket body. Um, especially if you have a tab design that's going to push in because you don't want it to just curl up on the bottom. Uh, but you can let that sit and go from there. Um, if you were trying to uh, seal the edge green here a little bit, so you wouldn't seal the edge that goes against the rocket. So, you know, if this was the rocket tube and your fin was going on like that, you'd want to leave that green open to accept your glue later on. So don't seal the edge going against the rocket body. You'd want to seal the rest. And so here you could use that super thin wood glue. Just kind of paint that down. Lightly down the edge. You don't want it sucking into all the paper. Just enough to soak into the wood. So we're not getting a lot of bleeding on the edge of the paper. And you can see the shine of it there. So that'll dry pretty quick. And that's just, again, going to seal those wood grain uh, end fibers, end grain. So that you're not soak, sucking in moisture. Um, again, when you go to paint, it won't be sucking in paint at different rates. And, you know, leaving the edges splotchy. Um, again, just really depends on your fin design, how thick they are. Again, whether or not you airfoil them. Um, I'm going to show you why you want to skin your fins. You see that wood grain still there? It comes through all the layers of primer paint. Uh, that high spot there is a little bit of wood filler, which is actually harder than the balsa wood, so it's almost impossible to sand off on these fins. Uh, but still some pretty deep pockets there in the grain. Not super thin. Another reason, let's look at this, let's find the one fin. Uh, the balsa wood just absorbs a lot of the moisture. You can see how this one actually warped um, as it took a lot of the moisture from the spray paint. Even though it was put on with a jig and was straight, uh, it did not stay that way after the painting. Um, so most likely with the, the skinned fins, uh, the interior wood wouldn't have absorbed a lot of that, and it probably would have stayed straighter. So. You can see this one's going to kind of veer a little bit. Two of the fins, the vertical bottom one right now, have turned out pretty good. And actually, both of those kind of warped a little bit. 